This video is for week eight Friday, diagramming your DGP sentence. So this one is going to be, or could be a little bit more complicated looking because for this week's sentence, it was compound, which means it was two sentences um, brought together as one. Let's look at it. That is an unbelievably gigantic cat. Everyone should be afraid of it. Now, yesterday you had to fix the, the mistakes here. Obviously, you had to fix the capitalization and the punctuation at the end, but then you also had to figure out how to join this these two sentences correctly because right now, it's a run-on. So I've got the brackets separating the two independent clauses. You could have chosen a few things. You could have done a comma followed by the conjunction and. That is an unbelievably gigantic cat, comma, and everyone should be afraid of it. You could have put a period between the two sentences and capitalized everyone, or very simply, you could have used a semicolon. If you use a semicolon, you do not need a conjunction. So we're going to assume that you used a semicolon here. All right, notice that when you've got a compound uh, sentence, when it comes to diagramming, you've got two diagrams. You've got this top diagram up here, and this is going to be for your first independent clause. And then below it, you have your second diagram. That is for your second independent clause. Please notice that these diagrams are not beside each other. One is on top, the other is on bottom. That is crucial. Look at it. Notice that you've got your long horizontal line running across the page, and then you've got your long vertical line going all the way through it. That splits your subject side from the predicate side, from everything else. So that is an unbeliev unbelievably gigantic cat. Sorry, I can't talk. Your subject is that. So that needs to, that, the word that needs to go here. The spot beside it is for your linking verb. And then on the other side is for your predicate nominative. So that is cat. Your predicate nominative is a noun that comes after the linking verb and it's renaming your subject. So cat is a noun after my linking verb is, and cat is renaming the subject that. That is cat. So everything else underneath it is going to be, underneath cat, is going to be the words that describe cat. Which cat? And what kind of cat? Gigantic. So cat's right here. What kind of cat? Gigantic. And notice that Branching off of gigantic, you have got a word that is describing gigantic. How gigantic? Unbelievably. So your words, your adjectives and adverbs need to be attached to whatever word they're describing. Gigantic is describing cat, but gigantic is also being described by the adverb unbelievably. Okay? Notice you've got this dotted line right here. I left you a note in red. The dotted line represents the semicolon that joins the two sentences together. So normally a um, dotted line is reserved for conjunctions and they are going to be used or the dotted line joins together whatever the conjunction joined in the sentence. Well we didn't have the conjunction and we ha we're going to assume you used a semicolon. So Normally, if this were used for a conjunction, we would put our conjunction there, and, but, or, for. We're just using a semicolon, so nothing goes here. So when you are joining two independent clauses together, your compound sentence, your dotted line is going to join the two diagrams between the verbs. So here's your linking verb here, here's the second linking verb, and it's going to join them together. Let's look at your second diagram. So here is for my second subject, everyone should be afraid of it, who should be. Here is for your verb. Now this time we have a verb phrase, a helping verb and a main verb. Those have to stick together in a diagram. Everyone should be what? Up here you had a predicate nominative, which is a noun renaming the subject. Down here we have a predicate adjective. A predicate adjective is an adjective that comes after your linking verb and it's describing the subject. Everyone should be what? Afraid. And then here you have your prepositional phrase. Put your preposition here and your object of preposition on the short horizontal line. 